Viking DNA and the pitfalls of genetic ancestry DNA tests. We know that these type of tests have been outlawed in Turkey because a lot of Turks are finding out that their ancestries are actually Greek. Anyway, this is on The Conversation by Anna Callen, Associate Professor, Archaeology Researcher in Stockholm University, and Daniel Strand, PhD, History of Ideas at Center of Multidisciplinary Studies, Uppsala University. The Middle Age white man raises his sword to the skies and roars to the gods. The results of his genetic ancestry tests have just arrived in his suburban mailbox. His eyes fill with tears as he learns that he is 0.012% Viking. These are the scenes from a video advertised for the TV series Vikings. This man is certainly not the only one yearning for a genetic te uh, test to confirm his Viking ancestry. A plethora of companies around the world market DNA tests that promise to provide scientific facts about your identity. But there's a catch to this. These companies often claim to provide a complete view of your ancestry, even though they really only compare your DNA with other customers in their database, not on a Viking database. Now, according to recent estimates, over 26 million people from across the world purchased a genetic ancestry test. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. So 26 million people worldwide purchased a genetic ancestry test and in the wake of this type that the hype researchers began to investigate how the tests affect our perceptions of ourselves. How do people make sense of a test result stating that they are, for instance, 35% Ashkenazi Jewish, 27% British, or 4% Western Asian? Some researchers have concluded that such test kits make customers believe that humanity can be divided into biological races and that customers see the tests as a way of discovering their true identities. Other researchers have argued that people use their test results selectively picking and choosing the genetic data they find compatible with their personal desires and aspirations. And from this perspective, taking a genetic ancestry test involves some level of creative interpretation. Now, what it means to have Viking DNA. In our study, we carried out interviews with people from the US, the UK, and Sweden who had purchased genetic ancestry tests to see if they were related to Vikings. Since the test results did not include the term Viking, most of them pointed to the category Scandinavian in their ethnic charts as proof of having Viking ancestry. Almost all of the people in our study saw that the results as scientific confirmation of either being related to Vikings or of actual, actually being a Viking. And as a man from the US puts it, the results began to confirm or at least lay the basis for the person that I am. In a similar way, a woman from Sweden said that her tests allowed her to, quote, know who I am and what my origins are, end quote. But what the tests actually provide proved was based on creative interpretation. In the sense, several of our interviewees took images of the Viking fostered in popular culture and political propaganda and used them to make sense of their own lives. For example, people with experiences of violence and abuse used their Viking genes as explanation, describing Vikings as warriors and berserkers. Knowing that I am descended, they said, from Vikings, a man from the U.S. said, has made it clearer to me why there might be a genetic preponderance of violence and explosive anger in my family, he said. In a similar way, interviewees who considered themselves to be restless described the Viking as, as explorers and naval engineers. A woman from the U.S. said, I have to see new lands. And she added that it was due to the Viking in her. It seems then that the use of genetic ancestry tests can facilitate a kind of genetic determinism in which a person's life and the natural result of their genome, from this perspective, humans appear not to have much control over their lives. Genetics and race. 
the impact of genetic ancestry tests is not just limited to people purchasing the tests. By activating concepts like Viking, British, or Jewish, such tests also play into a wider politics of race and ethnicity. Vikings have been used as a common sign for a demographic which has historically been affiliated to notions of whiteness and Nordic nationalism, while purporting to have Viking ancestry does not make a person a racist or a proponent of white supremacy, it should be remembered that the figure of the Viking, which served as a prominent symbol in European fascist movements during the 20th century, is far from innocuous. By dividing people into a racial or national category, genetic ancestry tests might be used to trigger tensions between different groups. Even if a person's Viking DNA only amounts to a small amount, it can still provide an alleged scientific basis for uh, racial division. In an era marked by increasing xenophobia and ethnic chauvinism, it's important to be aware of the interplay between genetics and ideas of race. This is from The Conversation by Paul Kevinley. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.